everybody would make for the search, everybody would be researcher. <laughs> Sometimes the, re the research is very stressful. And by the end of the day, you should have at least one thing uh, which you find new. Myself, I spend most of my time in the laboratory doing research and solving difficult problems. Like if I have to write a good paper, uh, three, four months, uh, I think is, is enough. Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Umar and today we're going to talk about research job in Finland. When I say research, I mean everything relating to research. That includes paid thesis work, project researches, assistant researcher, junior researcher, research assistant, or even PhD. So rather than using all these words, I will only use one word, which is research job. It's more like a simple job where you go up every day to the work and come back home in the evening. But here, your job is doing research. Simple as that. I hope you get it. Wait, how can you tell them what you know about research? You are not a PhD student. You never even did a paid thesis. Don't waste their time. Wait, you stupid. I'm not going to tell myself. I'm going to ask the researchers. Can't you wait for a second? You are so impatient. All right, watch this. So in my last uh, video, we talked about an odd job called Pusti. And today we're going to talk about good job, which is a researcher's job. So I'm not a researcher myself. So I'm going to go and ask those people who are doing research all the time. Those socially awkward people, which you guys don't met very often. So let's go and talk to them. Follow me. The purpose of this video is to explore how to get a research job in Finland. Who can be a researcher? Is research work is paid? If yes, then how much money is involved? Can anybody be a researcher? And how to find a research project? I will answer all these questions step by step, so stick around till the end. My name is Valery. I am a doctoral student at Electrical Engineering Department and I am studying Electrical Machines. Okay, the most common question people ask, the newcomer ask, that how to get a PhD, like you are a doctoral student, mm -hmm. how you reach there and how anybody else can reach there. Can you explain a little? Well, um, I should say that maybe it, w it was my dream that I studied in Russia. I had a plan to come here in La Peranta because I was here already in summer school in 2013 and I met a professor already here and I found that he is very talented and world famous and I exactly aiming to this professor and I wanted to work with him and then I came here I just was working hard and showing that I deserve his position. I studied communication then I just arrived. I attended his lectures and communicate every time. I am Amin Haj and I am from Khanewal. I am project researcher in LUT and uh, especially in the electrical field. In Finland researcher job is a little bit difficult to find but it's not impossible. You have to struggle a little bit like uh, you have to visit some professors, you have to be in direct contact with the professors. You have to search out first in, in the university's website, in the specific department, and uh, you have to see which professor is, uh, uh, is most renowned and which professor has, uh, has most funding. Based on that, uh, you, you went to their office, you fixed an appointment by email, and uh, after that, uh, you just uh, introduce yourself to the professor, and uh, you, t you, uh, you tell him everything which you have done in your past. My name is Chong Di. I'm from China and uh, I'm currently a PhD student at La Peranda University of Technology, Finland. And uh, my major is electrical engineering and I'm studying uh, electrical machine design at the moment. I think the most important thing is that during your master's study you have to work hard and you have to get some I mean good uh, results for the exams okay. and uh, after that uh, maybe you have to uh, be active to communicate with your potential supervisor as usual I'm gonna give you some insights I'm gonna tell you how to reach there so the first insight is you need to target and communicate 
Now, when I say target, I mean target your area of study, target your favorite professor, and target what type of job in the research work you want to do from the very beginning. I mean, in your master's or even before that, how you can do that? Very simple. It's all on the university website. Just go in there, see what kind of areas they are researching about, what kind of professors are there, what type of publication they have already done, etc., etc. Then follow the professor, not physically. I mean, follow the professor's work, read his article, read his publication. Where? Guess what? Read in front of him during the class. That's how you stand out in assignments. That's how you get good grades. That's how you get noticed, man. The professor should realize that this is the person I will be yelling for the next three, four years and sending unlimited email. If you receive that status, then definitely you will receive the contract. Simple, isn't it? But apart from that, I have a friend, Saad Salim. He's a former researcher in Olto University and he has a special tip to share. Let's see what he has to say. So those of you who don't understand Urdu, let me explain a little. What he was trying to say, make up your face like that, you're a very needy person. And we South Asians, particularly Pakistani, Indians, Bengalis, we are quite special in that. When we just look at somebody, that person understand our needs. That's right, you got it. Now, here is the golden rule. The second insight is you need to build a relationship with your professor. The relationship between you and your professor must be like Finland and Snow. Consider your professor name is Finland and your name is Snow. So you should see each other every day, okay? In the class, outside the class, even in the sauna, uh, walking away to the university, in the corridor, right or left, he should remember your fate and your need. That is how you get the contract. Guys, as we all know, we researches are funded by different foundations. So what if, if I share a PDF file with you, that includes the foundation name, the amount they are funding, the deadline to apply for that uh, foundation, the area they are giving donations to, and the best part of that sheet is, it is month-wise. So from January to December, you can see in January, there are the deadlines of five foundations, and you can apply easily and you know how much money you can get and then it comes to February and onwards to December. Isn't that cool? This is cool. And I'm not doing research myself, so this sheet can be helpful to you guys. And if you want that sheet, just put your email in the comments. I will send it to you. I know you want it. First of all, I think is hard working. It's the most important. Because as for me, I do not treat myself as talented or very sharp-minded, but all that I have is due to hard work. We are all junior researchers. To be a junior researcher, I think the most important thing is that you have to be patient about all the research work, and then you have to have some special skills about your specific, specific uh, discipline. You have to be very good in your uh, qualitative skills. Like when you sit, you perform, you should uh, have something in the uh, by the end of the day. And uh, quantitative is also important, but I will say that uh, qualitative is more required for uh, to be a researcher. Yeah. You have to stick to one topic. Of course, at the beginning you can somewhere flow between a couple of them, but after one year you have to stick to, to you have to find your way uh, you have to be very strong in in your core field like uh, if you are uh, like I am I am electrical doing my uh, project such a job in electrical engineering I have experience in MATLAB and uh, I was having experience in fluid dynamics for example for technique for uh, engineering PhD students you have to uh, have some you, are, you have to be capable of doing some programming mm -hmm. and uh, data analysis and something else. Of course, you have to be familiar with all kinds of uh, all kinds of softwares for writing, uh, drawing figures, and something else. Core like software skills, uh, you have to be very fluent in uh, FEA 
and uh, I am working on uh, open source software Elmer and it's the same like uh, ANSYS and other electromagnetism software. All right, I'm quite sure if you follow my instruction, you will get your research contract. Then you need to plan and execute. So you should be planning your day, your week, your year, almost everything you need to plan. Nothing can come by itself. So you need to plan accordingly. You even plan your main decisions of life. For example, where to settle, which country you want to live after you do PhD, when you wanted to marry or not to marry. Stop! You're crossing your limits! So I have a plan for today. Every day I write, write a list of what I have to do in, and the same list I have for the week. For the week, okay. Yeah. Is it uh, with consultation with your supervisor or you made your own? My own. I, I always have some plans for every day. I, I come to the laboratory every morning on around maybe 8 o'clock and I just follow my plan. And uh, after I finish all the tasks, most probably it's already maybe 4 or half past 4. And after that, I take a rest and I just go home. Then you go home. Yeah, and then go home. And some, but sometimes if you feel uh, your pro progress is not so good, I will spend some extra time in the evening. Okay. And we just uh, came here, you have the plan, you just sit and by the end of the day you should have at least one thing uh, which you are finding so it is very important i bring it leg by leg in weeks and then in a days and start normally in the morning and working to this what else should today. you stress out yeah stress comes quite often quite often and uh, you have to relax you have to, i would recommend really take rest in uh, weekends because some people they think that oh I have to do so much stuff and I have to work or also for the weekends but that's not the way because so we have four major advantages of a research job number one it is well paid if you are a part-time researcher you will get somewhere between 800 to 1200 euros a month not bad and if you are a full-time researcher then your contract must have somewhere 1600 euros to 2400 euros which is a quite good money to spend good amount of time reading paper isn't it number two you have a respect in the family and society number three you can talk with pride in your peers and others that you know what i'm doing research you know after a few years i'll be doctor i can put doctor in my name that's good that's cool isn't it and the last one is traveling a lot of traveling the most important one so you travel for study trips you travel for symposium seminar conferences never ending and that's not paid by your pocket that's all sponsored sometimes i get jealous with my research friends you know they are going either going to one country or coming back from another and i'm just sitting here and they are just traveling the world around someone is burning with jealousy now let's talk about disadvantages. As of everything, there are disadvantages with the research work. Number one and the foremost, you stay in the university like you have glued with the chair and the computer all the time. You know nothing what's happening outside. Actually, you don't need to know what is happening outside because your focus is right there. Number two, you don't learn from experiences like with interaction, talking to people because your circle is very limited. Two, three, four, five people form a research group, then the supervisor, and that's your whole life for the next three, four years. Exactly, you go some time for the parties on the weekend, but you know, most of the time you spend in there. And number three, you are just closed in a shell. So you become quite socially awkward and when you try to mingle up with people and you try to explain something, then you explain too much because that's how you've been developed over the years. And then people might say, oh my God, this guy started again. Mm -hmm. People start avoiding you as well. That happens, truly that happens. So guys, that's it for the day. I hope you liked the video. Give it a thumbs up and uh, share with your friends and family who are actually doing a research or planning to do a research. I'll see you guys later in uh, two weeks time because I'm moving to Spain to have some fun in the sun. Bye-bye.